when you look at that report, though, there was no collusion. When it comes to obstruction, they said there wasn't enough evidence. The president maybe mentioned that he didn't want Mueller to, to investigate. But keep in mind, this investigation all started with this unverified dossier. And that's why he didn't want this investigation. He said, because it's bogus, it's false, I didn't do anything. But he never actually got rid of Mueller. He never fired Mueller. So he never tried, he, it never actually happened. So on what basis can they impeach? It, because it's not it, it's not criminal, it's political. Mm -hmm. And the politics are the Democrats uh, would like revenge for the fact that uh, Donald Trump won. They feel you can't. He, he did not, uh, he is not the legitimate president of the United right. States, and that's one way to do it. If you're wondering how Trump's most loyal fans could be so ill-informed about the Mueller report and reality in general, you just have to watch a few minutes of Fox and Friends, which the president regularly touts. In this segment, the hosts tell a slew of easily disprovable lies. First of all, they say that there was no collusion, which is not true. The Mueller report said that there wasn't evidence of criminal conspiracy, but outlined multiple instances of collusion, most of which are already public knowledge. Mike Flynn had conversations with Russian Ambassador Kislyak. Paul Manafort shared polling data with Konstantin Kalimnik, who had ties to the Kremlin. Don Jr., Manafort, and Kushner attended a Trump Tower meeting with a Russian lawyer who promised dirt on Hillary Clinton. Trump asked Russia on national television to hack Hillary Clinton's emails and they listened. So to say that there was no collusion when there were numerous efforts by the Trump campaign to cooperate with and accept help from the Russians is not correct. As for obstruction, whereas the Fox and Friends host says that there wasn't enough evidence. When it comes to obstruction, they said there wasn't enough evidence. That's not what Mueller said at all. He wrote in the report itself that after outlining 10 different instances of obstruction of justice, that it's up to Congress to determine what to do with the information. He explicitly wrote, with respect to whether the president can be found to have obstructed justice, we concluded that Congress has authority to prohibit a president's corrupt use of his authority. That doesn't mean Trump's innocent. That means that using the information that he's outlined in his 448 page report, the responsibility falls on Congress to move to impeach or not. Which is the same process, by the way, that independent counsels and prosecutors followed for the Nixon and Clinton impeachments. The president maybe mentioned that he didn't want Mueller to, to investigate. Yes, Trump maybe mentioned that he didn't want Mueller to investigate. In fact, he ordered Don McGahn to have him removed on two separate occasions. And that is literally obstructing justice. That's like trying to exonerate a murderer by saying, yes, he did stab someone to death, but that doesn't mean he tried to murder murder them. The Fox and Friends host then tries to say that Trump should be absolved anyway because the whole probe was started on bogus pretenses, this fake dossier. But keep in mind, this investigation all started with this unverified dossier, and that's why he didn't want this investigation. He said, because it's bogus, it's false, I didn't do anything. But... <sighs> That's not true either. The FBI started its investigation into Trump because in May of 2016, Trump advisor George Papadopoulos told an Australian diplomat that the Russians had dirt on Hillary Clinton. That was the key factor in persuading the FBI to open an investigation into Russian interference in the election and possible coordination with the Trump campaign. And finally, the easiest point to debunk of all, that because Trump never actually fired Mueller, there's no obstruction and no basis to impeach. Which is like saying, if I tried to pay an assassin to kill someone and he refused, that I'm all good, no harm, no foul. But beyond the surface level ridiculousness of that sentiment, there is something called endeavoring to obstruct. And yes, this is an inchoate crime, which is basically defined as an attempt to commit a crime, but endeavoring to obstruct is still prosecutable. In fact, that exact charge was included in Nixon's articles of impeachment as interfering or endeavoring to interfere with the conduct of investigations by the DOJ, the FBI, the special prosecutor, and Congress. In other words, literally every last sentence that we heard from this Fox and Friends segment is demonstrably, shamelessly false. So while Fox News will often claim that there's a difference between its journalists and its opinion hosts, like Hannity, Tucker, Judge Jeanine, Fox and Friends, it's segments like these that do irreparable damage to the entire network. It's why Democrats refuse to legitimize this network with a debate. And it's why even objective journalists like Shep Smith and Chris Wallace often aren't taken seriously because you're only as strong as your weakest link. And the weakest link on Fox News is currently spewing out lies completely unchecked.